Hello and welcome back to Dr. Debt Free. In today's video, we're going over my money milestones or money goals that I have set not only for this year, but for years to come. Now, if you are in the finance world or if you are working on debt payoff, chances are you love also setting little goals for yourself, which if you've watched my 2022 financial goals video, you'll know right now my big goals are debt payoff, savings or sinking funds, and investments. However, I wanted to go over a few of my other maybe more long-term goals that aren't just for this year, but for years to come. So starting out, I've just created a chart here. And so in this left column, we'll have the money milestone I'm working on. And then in the second column, it's my goal date. So when I hope to hit this money milestone, but then when I actually do hit it, I'm going to fill in the actual date. And then there's just a third column here where I will check what off when I complete the goal. So my first money milestone <clears throat> is paying off 10% of my debt, which when I calculated this is $20,763. And I hope to get this by July 2022. Right now, after the month of January, we are almost at $14,000 paid off. So this is about $7,000 left to go. Really hoping I can hit it by July 2022. And I'm working hard to do this right now. The second goal is 25% of debt paid off. And this is calculated to be $51,907. So a big chunk of money. And I hope to be able to do this by August 2023. And basically, in order to hit this, when I calculated the amount that I would need to contribute to debt per month, it comes out to be about $2,000 per month so I can hit this. My next goal is 50% of debt paid off, which is $103,814. I'm really hoping I can hit this by December 2024. When I calculated this number, I, I did it by contributing $2,500 towards debt payoff per month. So I'm increasing as time goes on here. And the next goal is 75% of debt paid off, which is $155,720 which I hope to hit by December 2025. So we have a big jump here from December 2024 to December 2025. I basically hope to contribute $52,000 to debt um, in 2025. So that's a very big chunk that would be going towards debt. And then from there on, we have 100% of debt paid off. So my full debt right now that I'm working on is $207,627. If you haven't seen my debt confession, I talk about the different debts that I have going on there. And as you can see here, definitely a very, very big jump from December 2025 to August 2026, where I'm hoping to pay off about $52,000. So... These are just goals, definitely big stretch goals, but I like setting my sights high and we'll see what we can accomplish as the time goes on. If you've watched my debt-free date calculation with my debt snowball, you'll know that that calculation is actually a lot farther than this date. It's actually in 2028 or 2027. So this is definitely a stretch goal, but I think if I really, really work hard, I can make this happen. And right now I'm not even using the snowball method. So I'm able to sort of conquer the higher interest debts right now. Whereas with the snowball method, you're just conquering the lowest, the lowest debt that you have. It's not based on interest. It's just meant based on the amount of debt that you have in that specific category. So I definitely think this it will be closer to my actual debt-free date, but let's see what is to come. Moving on from debt, going into net worth. So 
If you've watched my recent net worth video, you'll know that I am in the negative 180 thousands. So my number one net worth goal or my first net worth goal is to hit negative $150,000 net worth. And I'm hoping to do this by the end of this year or December, 2022. The next net worth goal I have is negative $100,000. And this I'm hoping to hit by the end of next year, December, 2023. The nice thing about net worth is you're able to contribute to it, not only by paying off your debt, but by gathering savings, making investments. So I find it's a lot easier to hit these numbers. And so that's why I've included them here because it's a little bit of extra excitement. Next number is $0 net worth or positive net worth, which I hope to hit in the following year, December, 2024. So that's again, another stretch goal, but I think with paying off debt, having savings and also contributing to investments, including my RRSP and my TFSA, which in the US, I know you guys have Roth IRAs um, and tax-free accounts. I'm really hoping that I can hit positive net worth by the end of December, 2024. My next goal is one I also hope to happen this year. I came relatively close to it last year. Definitely still a little bit off, but I'm hoping I can hit $100,000 of income by the end of 2022. Right now, I am off to a pretty good start. Fortunately, I'm off right now with a cold, the lovely C word. So this all depends on the amount of hours and the amount of patients I'm able to see in 2022. But so far, we've started out pretty good, except for the last week or so. The next number is $125,000 worth of income, which I'm hoping I can reach by the end of 2023. This is pretty much with my job that I currently have right now as a, an associate chiropractor. This is pretty much where I hit my max income at my current employer. You can only see so many patients in a day and I only have so many hours that I work through the week. So when I max it out, this is pretty much where things end. So in order to hit anything above this income, I would have to be doing other side hustles, getting rental income, um, having other investments. So that's probably something I'll definitely look into a little bit more in the coming years because I would love to be making more than $125,000 of income a year. The next goal I have or money milestone I have is a $3,000 emergency fund. And I'm hoping to complete this by December, 2022. Now $3,000 is about a one month's worth of expenses. This is including pretty much bare bones budget, including my debt payoff. Um, so it's a pretty big emergency fund. And this is something I'm actually going to add to my budget by paycheck workbook the, in the sinking funds. This is going to be another sinking fund that I'm working on for the rest of the year. So I'll add that in after we go through the rest of the list here. Next is a $9,000 emergency fund. So this is three times a $3,000. So this is a three month emergency fund. And this is something I hope to achieve by the end of 2023. And then next we have an $18,000 emergency fund, which is a six month emergency fund, which I hope to achieve by my 31st birthday. And the reason I want to have six months of an emergency fund is because I am an independent contractor with work, I don't get a maternity leave. So I'm hoping that I can have six months of expenses saved up before we decide to have any kids. That way, if I need to go on bed rest, if I need to take any time off, if I'm just wanting to take a little bit of extra time off after having a kid, I can afford to do so. It's very common in my field that women take maybe a month, 
six weeks off and then they're back to work. And I want to have options just in case I need to or want to take a little bit of extra time. So next we have $10,000 invested. So right now I have about $7,000 invested, but it isn't something that I am really focusing on this year. If you've watched a few of my other videos, you'll know that I'm really focusing on debt payoff and I'm only contributing about $100 a month towards investments right now. But if I do hit my $100,000 income goal, then chances are that I will be contributing to my RRSP at the end of the year. That way I can take myself out of the $100,000 tax bracket into a lower tax bracket so I won't be paying higher taxes and more of my money can go towards debt payoff. Next, I have $50,000 invested, which I hope to achieve two years after, so March 1st, 2025. And this just continues to go along with the fact that I'll be contributing to my RRSP just to save on paying more taxes, basically. And then after that, we have $100,000 invested. So same thing here, two years later, I want to have $100,000 invested, and that'll be just with me contributing to my RRSP and my TFSA so that I can save on taxes, but also use the benefits of those accounts, which eventually are going to include the first time home buyers program. So yeah, these are my money milestones for the next couple of years. I'm kind of excited to go through this and I will go through this probably with every monthly budget recap that I do just to see if we've checked off any of these goals and when we have checked them off. But I wanted to add in that extra sinking fund to my budget by paycheck workbook. So I'm just gonna grab that. Okay, so this is my budget by paycheck workbook by the budget mom. And I'm just flipping over to the sinking funds page and adding that extra sinking fund which is the emergency fund, which I hope to have $3,000 by the end of the year. So I'm also gonna add this into the visual portion. Really excited to share um, the sinking fund contributions I've been able to make in February. It's been a really good month for this, especially the taxes column. <clears throat> but I'm gonna add that sixth sinking fund here which is my emergency fund. And so there's 10 leaves here. So because I am saving 3,000, 3,000 divided by 10 is 300. So each of these are worth $300. There we go. Okay, so this is all filled out. Um, pretty excited to have added this extra fund. Can't wait to see where the rest of the year goes with these funds. And I just want you to let me know in the comment section down below. Do you have any money milestones that you're working on right now? What are you getting close to completing? Let me know in the comment section down below.